We all love earning passive income, and over the last several months, I took you along on my passive income journey, specifically on the Helium Indoor Hotspot. Now, as you know, I was able to ROI on this device in the first four months. That means the last three months, I've been running on pure profit. But today, we're gonna up our game to the next level. That's right, we're gonna introduce a Helium Outdoor Hotspot. We're gonna get this guy set up, find out what's in the kit, what's not in the kit, how to build a mast, and the best way to configure this guy for maximum earnings. So, if you're ready to get started, let's get into it. You open your hotspot kit, there's some components in there we need to understand what comes with the kit and what does not. So, of course, in the kit, you've got your hotspot, you've got your mounting brackets, including the angle adjuster and all the bolts to assemble those. You've got your bushings to allow for your Cat5 cable to seal correctly inside the bottom of the hotspot right there, as you can see. And it does have bushings for two different size Cat5 cables. Then it comes with two hose clamps for mounting your particular bracket to your mounting pole. However, you're going to mount that. Now, what this kit does not come with is a PoE injector. Now, that's power over Ethernet. That's because there is no power adapter that comes with this hotspot. So you have to inject power through the network cable. Lastly, if you're going to mount this outside, make sure you get an indoor-outdoor Cat5 cable. If you use standard indoor Cat5, you could end up with problems from UV protection or for weather which is going to give you reduced returns or even short out your device. Lastly, a 13 millimeter wrench to put everything together. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is mount the bracket onto the back of the hotspot. Now, it doesn't matter which direction that you mount it, but you can see there is the angles on the side there. So if you're going to have access from one direction to the other, think about how you want to mount that which way. But it does work in both directions. So we'll put in the four supplied bolts into there for that. So we'll install the four bolts into the back of the mounting bracket and tighten those down with the 13 millimeter end wrench. Okay. Now the next part we're going to install is our pole mounting bracket. Now as you can see, it's got recesses for the nuts on one side. So your two nuts are simply going to fit into there. Slide that onto the post and then slide your bolt through this side to tighten into your nut. Now at the moment, we're only gonna snug these finger tight because we don't wanna tighten them up until we actually adjust the degrees we want this pointed at. So once we have that in place, you can see right there, we can adjust our degree angle depending on how our pole is mounted. And we'll do that after we have it finalized in place. Now the great thing about this mounting bracket is it can be surface mounted utilizing the holes already in the bracket. But if you're gonna mount this to a pipe, it does come with two very large hose clamps. Put those in place, simply lace them in the hole, Sliding through the sweat in the bracket and bring it back around. And that's going to let you clamp that to a pole anywhere in probably 8 inches diameter. But you don't need this if you're going to do a surface mount. So decide on your configuration what you've got to put in place. Now the last thing we need to, to prepare our hotspot for mounting is get the network cable ran. Now I buy my network cable in bulk and I add my own terminations. Now you can buy these pre-made. I like to do it where I terminate one end and that allows me to waste the wire through very small holes back into my interior of the house or wherever I'm running the PoE at. So to do this, first thing we have to do is assemble it backwards. So first thing we want is our lock ring. Go ahead and slide that over our connector. Next we want our fingered bushing and we want to make sure those fingers are pointed towards our lock nut. Now the next part we need is our weather resistant bushings. Now there are two different diameters like I said. That one is for a smaller Cat5. This one is for a larger cat or coax cable. Now, I'm using a pretty small cable, so I'm going to use a small bushing. As you can see, they do have a fatter end and a skinnier end. The fatter end is going to go towards your lock nut. The great thing about these is they do come apart in two pieces. So simply slide it around your cable with the fat end towards your lock nut, and that's in place. Now, the last piece we put in is the threaded coupler. Now, it's really important to note that during this installation video, I actually put this coupler on backwards. Do you see that white washer in the video there? That needs to go towards your hotspot. But if you watch, my first setup, I actually put it on backwards. I did fix it at a later date, but I want to correct it right now in case you're following along setting up your hotspot. Then we slide up our fingered bushing and our lock nut at the same time and simply tighten that down. But from here, go ahead and plug in your network cable into either PoE port and then screw your bushing into place. Now I will tell you, be very careful on threading this in. 
The first time I tried to put it in, I started cross-threading it. So if you start feeling resistance really quick, know that you're probably not in the threads correctly because it should tighten all the way down to where it's good and flush. And you just cinch everything down. Your cable is now solid and you're ready to mount this guy on the pole. Now one special note on my installation, I'm going to be utilizing a half inch EMT tubing to mount this to. So unfortunately these hose clamps are simply way too big. But I do have some heavy duty automotive hose clamps. And as you can see, those fit in great and give me a nice tight fit. Okay, now if you're like me and you drained your piggy bank by buying your hotspot and then your outdoor Cat5 cable, you're going to wonder, how do I get a mast? Well, masts are pretty expensive. I found a workaround that I'm going to try out. I'm not saying this is going to work, but here's my solution for today. I got a piece of half-inch EMT tubing from Home Depot for about $6. Then I got a three-quarter-inch EMT for about $9. Together, that gives me a mast of about 18 feet tall. And as you can see, I simply drilled holes through and bolted them together. So, for less than 20 bucks, I've got an 18-foot mast. Question is, will it hold the weight? Will it work? Well, that's what we'll find out today. When you go to mount your network cable, do not just run it straight from the connector over to the pole and down the pole. The problem is, in high winds or if anything tugs on that network cable, it's going to apply stress to that connector inside the hotspot. That can potentially damage your hotspot. Instead, give yourself a service loop. Take your network cable, dip it around, come up and zip tie it to the mount. Make sure it's good and secure, then loop it down your pole and run that down. It's going to do two things. It's going to give you this free play. So even if something rips this cable loose, it's going to break the cable long before it hurts your hotspot. Second of all, in heavy weather, the moisture is going to hit this cable and it's going to come down here to what we call a drip loop. So the moisture will condense and fall out versus potentially running into your hotspot. That's going to keep your device safe and make sure that nothing damages it. Okay, so now you can see we've got our service loop and about 18 to 20 inches we put a zip tie securing our Cat5 all the way down the length of our pole. Now I stopped at this point in time because I want to use the rest of this to figure out the elevation, how I'm going to mount it through the roof line. Then what I'm going to do is add enough cable to make sure it goes all the way to my PoE, which will be inside. Once you figure out that length, go ahead and cut your Cat5. Now always cut your wire a little long because you can always cut more off. You simply cannot extend it. So plan accordingly before you cut any wires. Once we got this guy way up in the air, we had to secure it to the house. So I simply drilled a small hole through the metal roofing and secured it to the framework using four three-quarter inch EMT straps. Now these are on the same aisle as I bought the EMT and they're designed to fit it. But then I realized that's a lot of metal to be swinging up in the air. So we secured it with a guy wire system. A guy wire is nothing more than stainless steel wire designed to handle the weather and secured to hold the top of a pole so it doesn't swing back and forth. Now as you can see, I did a three point system. Two of the guy wires go to each side of the house. The third one comes right down here on the back of the house and goes through this little frame I built. Now, this has to give it some backward force. As you can see, the cable passes right through that eyelet and comes down and secures right here to the house itself, utilizing a turnbuckle. Now, I installed turnbuckles on all three contact points. That way, over time, as the cable stretches or as the wind blows, I can go back through and I can adjust this turnbuckle to take up the slack in any of the three legs. So note is since I went ahead and put my hotspot so high up in the air, I went ahead and moved both my helium antenna and my wing bits antenna up above the hotspot. That gave them another 10 feet of elevation from where they were previously mounted. And I can tell you, these have already boosted my returns on both those devices. Okay, so now that we're ready to terminate the wire on the inside, a couple suggestions. If you're going to be doing a lot of this crypto networking thing, I highly recommend get yourself a set of crimpers, buy the terminal ends by themselves, and a set of testing blocks. Now these guys are going to test your cabling. So here's a setup to verify if this network cable is good. Simply push and hold the button. There you go. All green means this network cable is good end to end, ready to plug in. Now I've already got the test block plugged in the other end of our outdoor cable. Now another suggestion, when you do buy your terminals, make sure it's the ones that allow a complete pass through of your wires. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I know I'm wiring for terminal B configuration. So that's orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. From there, my terminal's up, I simply slide them in. Now if I have the pass through terminals, I can shove them all the way out the front and verify my cover codes before I ever clint this into place. And from there, simply cut off the excess, 
push them in until they're just flush. And slide in, in the crimper tool. Oops. And slide in the crimper tool and press it down. Make sure it's good and seated. Now, with that done, we should simply be able to plug that into the tester and hit our block. There we go. Four green, we know this wire is good to go. Let's power it up. Now the last component you're gonna have to buy separately is a PoE injector. And I'll put a link in the description down below to a couple that I recommend. Now a PoE injector is a power over ethernet. Essentially, it's going to power your device through your ethernet cable. Now once you get your device, it's really easy to just plug one end into the wall. And then on the other side, you're gonna have two data ports. One will say data in. The other will say power plus data out. Be very careful which one you plug in. The power plus data out must go out to your hotspot. Data in must be plugged into your switch or your router supplying your internet signal. A little tip here. Plug in your network cables before applying power to your PoE injector. Otherwise, if you try to plug in a network cable while it's powered up, could potentially create a spark or a power spike that could ruin your hotspot. So, be careful when you're plugging this in. Make sure all connections are seated before powering up your PoE injector. Now that we have our hotspot all set up and powered up, let's go ahead and onboard it into the Helium app. To do that, go ahead and go over to where it says Helium Builder. Click on that, and the first screen is going to show your fleet. Now, as you know, I've got a few different hotspots already running. The one we just set up is the Howling Ivory Elk, so it's already onboarded, already earning. But let's go through the process. So if you have a brand new hotspot, go ahead and click on the Deploy tab at the top. From there, select whether it's an indoor, an outdoor by Helium, or an outdoor by MNTD. Well, this is a Helium, so go ahead and select that. And it tells you right off the bat, keep your box. Okay, we got the box right here, ready to go. Next, face your users. Really important, when you're doing the onboarding, you're gonna have to be in front of the hotspot. So when I did my onboarding, I was actually sitting on the roof with my box in hand and my cell phone, and I just planned on staying up there a few minutes. So make sure you're in front of your hotspot. The next one says, place it high. Well, that's why we built an 18 foot mast. And so far it's been working great. The last one says, use the mount. The mount is really important because that has that angle bracket allowing you to change the angle so you can get the optimal returns and focus it directly where your users are gonna be. Once you understand all that, go ahead and click, I understand. Now the next screen says, connect your powered ethernet cable. If you haven't powered up your device yet, go ahead and make the final connections and power it up. Give it a minute or two to fully boot up, and then at the very bottom, you should see a blue light. Right next to where the network cable plugs in, across from that is like a whitish disc. If you look closely, that should be glowing blue. If it's not a solid blue, wait until it fully boots before proceeding. But if it is a solid blue, go ahead and click. The status light is solid blue, let's continue. Now the next screen is gonna ask your location. Now it's gonna be running off your cell phone's GPS at the time you're doing this process. So if you're not right next to your hotspot or this map is inaccurate, definitely go in and edit it. But if it is correct, go ahead and click choose. Now the next step is asking you to scan your QR code. Remember it said keep your box handy? Right here on the side of your box will have a sticker that has your QR code. This is this QR code that you need to be scanning to onboard your device. It's also the one you can scan to connect your cell phone to your device after it's onboarded. So if you wanna add this as one of your network sources, scan that QR code on your Wi-Fi network and it will automatically onboard this as a network option. Now, after you scan your QR code, the next question it's gonna ask you is about the angle your hotspot is facing. Really important to get this as accurate as humanly possible. So you can change your phone and actually turn with your phone and it will show on the map that that's the angle your hotspot is facing. So make sure you're by your hotspot, hold your phone in the same direction, and make sure it's pointing in the same direction that your cell phone is on the map. Once those are done, go ahead and confirm your onboarding. Now, once your onboarding is complete, your hotspot should now show right here in the fleet status. To go in and check on your hotspot, like the Howling Ivory Elk we just put up on the roof, go ahead and open that device, scroll down, and it's gonna tell you about the download speed, upload speed, what the latency is, when the last time it got a heartbeat, and also the last time it did a speed test. Now it's really important, if you ever have a power outage or an internet connection issue, make sure to keep an eye on these stats because if you start missing heartbeats or you start failing speed tests, you will start losing rewards. So I like to check my hotspots once a day just to make sure everything's working great. Now from there, you're up and running. Now we have arrived at the time that everybody's been waiting for to find out exactly how much we've been earning on that new outdoor hotspot. Well, to do that, 
we're going to use the app called Helium Geek. So go ahead and open that app there, and that's going to list out my three mobile hotspots. The outdoor one we just installed is Howling Ivory Elk. So let's go ahead and open that guy. Go ahead and scroll down to where it says Rewards, and we want to go on the daily returns. Now, when we look at the last 21 days, we can see we're averaging a little over a thousand mobile tokens per day for proof of coverage. But keep in mind, this hotspot was set up in a residential area. I'm not expecting a lot of foot traffic. In fact, I might even be moving this hotspot to a much more public or commercial area. That way I can capitalize on all the data offloads from foot traffic utilizing the cell phone plan. So if you're doing your research, trying to decide if you want to go with an indoor or an outdoor, I can tell you honestly, if your family is running the Helium cell phone plan at home, go with an indoor. If you're running a business or somewhere that has a lot of foot traffic outside, like a library, a pub, a sporting event place, that would be awesome. That's where you really want those outdoor hotspots. But do your due diligence, decide for yourself, and especially go read up on the new HIP 131. That is going to have a huge impact on every hotspot on the planet. Putting it simply, if a hotspot does not have some data offload on a regular basis, they will not earn proof of coverage awards. So I'm going to have a video for that coming out for you very, very soon. But if you like this content and you want to see more, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button because I'm going to keep bringing you the best crypto information I can. I want to thank you very much for your time. Until next time, have a great night.